let's trace the circuit up front. We have the negatives. So those are the brown wires. And you can see on the board here that we've got the positive symbols here. So the anodes here, red, red. Red is going to trace through this relay switch, which is for the jam door. So the red goes into, you can see right there, orange. And the orange goes to the trigger switch. Yes. We trace back here the yellow, which is still on the positive end. The yellow bypasses here, goes straight to the positive on the pusher motor. All right, going to the negatives, we have again the, the cathode end, we have the brown. Brown goes into the negative of the feeder motor. This blue here is just to have that uh, jam door switch spliced in there, and you can see the blue goes back into brown. So we can chase the brown here going to our battery end, our negative of our battery, and also to the what is that? Normally closed. So the normally closed on our trigger switch. And let's see what we got here on the orange. I think we already traced the orange. Orange, red, orange. Okay. And the last one that we have here on this board, which is on the normally open. So when this thing is down, this activates pink, goes into the rev switch. So the rev needs to be closed, and then we can close the trigger switch. Okay, and also, since the pink is on the anode, that goes into the anode positive battery terminal. All right, so this is the revised circuit for the Nemesis, although this will also work for um, pretty much any flywheel blaster that's an automatic. So this would be really good for the Chaos as well. So starting at the very beginning, uh, let's see, we have the negative poles here. It looks like we have all this stuff still in play. It's not, it's actually bypassed. So you can bypass all of the inductors and uh, these little capacitors and everything, the resistance on there, simply by going, okay, if you look, these tabs go directly into the motors. So that's where you're going to mount your negatives and your positive leads. So the negative leads are going to go to doo -doo -doo, your negative lead on your feeder motor. And you can see there's a second lead that goes from the feeder motor to the uh, drain. That's the middle pin of the MOSFET. Okay, and going back to the positives. So the positives we have uh, going to... It's kind of hard looking at this through the screen. I really need to get myself some uh, wearable, wearable cameras. All right. There is a splice here. This pink wire here goes to the normally uh, closed of the rev switch, or not the rev switch, trigger switch. And the other splices into, again, back into the pink wire. So this 16 gauge wire here is essentially being made uh, pointless by splicing back into the stock pink wire, which goes into the normally closed pin of the rev switch. All right, now this fat wire here, the 16 gauge, and try try soldering two 16 gauge wires on the stock pin um, if you want to entertain yourself. The uh, 16 gauge wire here goes into the positive pin on our XT60 connector. All right, uh, since we're right here, may as well address the uh, the rectifier diode. Uh, it's a Zener diode, so usually in a diode the electrons only travel in one direction from positive to negative. We can see that this is actually flipped backwards, so it's like a reverse diode. The negative is going towards the positive, even though the flow of electrons naturally goes this way. In a circuit, the electrons naturally are going to flow from the positive to the negative. On a Zener diode or a reverse diode, um, when the 
power hits a certain point, then the flow of electrons can actually go in the opposite direction. Um, I have not run this circuit without the rectifier diode in place. I imagine if I pull it out, what will happen is the MOSFET will eventually overheat and uh, burn out. But that's the IN, or sorry, 1N5400 uh, rectifier diode. Uh, the MOSFET, what was it, an LN44? I forget. I'll, I'll post all of the parts on this, so we're not going to have to post all of it in there. The other thing you're not seeing is the... Uh, is the resistor. I think it's uh, either a 10k or a 100k. I forget what I used. And that goes from the uh, the gate pin to the uh, source pin. So it just kind of wraps around. Um, right. Negative, negative, negative. Uh, from the negative pole of the battery plug, that goes into the source. Right there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, shoot. Okay. Now, this pink wire actually goes into, correction here, the pink wire here actually goes into the common plug. So that's the middle plug. And um, the plug on the right, in addition to the 16-gauge wire that goes to the positive on the battery connector. Uh, let's see. That one, where does that one go? That one goes into the gate. Alright, so gate, that's the pin on the left. That goes to the normally closed, sorry, normally normally open. So the pin on the right, that's the one that's underneath the 16 gauge wire that's going back to the XT60 connector. In terms of what you're using for power source, all these rival blasters um, on the stock motors, which is what everybody uses, go off of the 3S cells. If you use 2S, then you might see possibly even lower than, than stock performance, or maybe about the same. Uh, this is a 1.3 amp hour um, 65C graphene. So more than enough current for this uh, system. And uh, Nice and smooth. Uh, so if you look at the heat shrink here on the uh, MOSFET, I didn't actually apply the heat gun to that to get it to shrink in place. So it shrank in place simply from uh, operating temperature. So that tells you right there that there is current going through the MOSFET and that current is generating a little bit of heat. Um, too much heat, you know, hence the uh, rectifier diode to address that. The MOSFET can eventually burn itself out. So usually when you see MOSFETs used in a circuit, because Nerf application is, you know, toy, whatever, it's kind of a low-hanging fruit, um, almost always you'll see MOSFETs that are either mounted onto a heatsink or it has a heatsink mounted to the top. So you can run it like this. And get a little bit warmer enough to uh, to warm up heat shrink wrapping. But uh, if you really want to engineer it properly, then what you should use is um, forget the shrink wrap and use a little bit of thermal glue, thermal paste, and paste a heat sink on top. Or if you want to over-engineer it because you're that type of uh, builder, then you get a bigger heat sink and you mount the MOSFET to that and then you mount the heat sink to the inside of the shelf because there's a lot of empty space in the Nemesis. so. This is actually a pretty easy shell to work with, I'll be honest. Um, in fact, I, I wouldn't mind working on more of these because uh, it's it's actually, it shows the kind of uh, evolution. I don't necessarily want to say perfection because there's still room for improvement. But it shows the evolution of the design of the rival blasters. And by the time they got to the Nemesis, this is kind of uh, where they probably wanted to be at from the beginning. And um, I don't know, it took them a few years, but whatever. And uh, I guess the only thing left to do here is um, kind of tack everything in place, clean everything up, and uh, then we'll screw everything back together and do some test firing. But I expect to see around uh, 120 feet per second, give or take. And um, rate of fire, I am not sure what you get off of uh, 
65C3S LiPos, but I would imagine because of the unreliability of the little popcorn feeder conveyor belt, probably I would expect to see maybe in the range of 8 to 10 shots per second, probably not even that, probably closer to 8, but uh, we'll see. We'll run some tests after we get this together. So that's pretty much it for the circuit. Um, here, we can do a quick little trace here, tack on the end, this is already running long. But this is a little easier to follow than the uh, wiring itself, which is kind of more prototype. And I'll never actually have a clean enough version where I can do a pre-wired loom. But since I'm not planning on doing more of these, maybe I will. Okay.